Welcome to another episode of How I Built My Own Track Spikes. In the last episode, I said I'd be testing the spikes for the first time. In the tests, I learned some of the strengths and weaknesses of my spikes, and I'll talk about those. But before we look at the tests, let's do a weigh-in. Alright, it's time to weigh the first wearable prototype. Four point three ounces. Let's see what it is in grams. One hundred twenty-three grams. Let's see how similar the other shoe is. Also one hundred. Oh no, one gram lighter. So four point three ounces. I'd say my goal is to get under four ounces. So I'm pretty close. Only the lightest of spikes get under four ounces and 4.3 ounces is like still a very competitive weight already. Right now athletes like Joshua Cheptegei and Sifan Hassan are setting world records in the Nike Dragonfly which is actually 4.7 ounces. But enough about weight, let's take a look at my first test run in these spikes. Right when I stepped onto the track there were no issues, the platform underneath felt okay and if there was anything wrong Maybe my forefoot was raised a little higher than my heel. Honestly though, I expected it could have been much worse. I was unsure how much the shoe would raise my forefoot when I screwed in the spikes because the forefoot was already as thick as the heel without the spikes. But so far, so good. Here I ran at a pace of about 450 per mile and it felt pretty good. It seemed a little easier than when I was wearing regular running shoes, which is the whole point of spikes. And it also felt better than when I was wearing my typical spikes, the Saucony Endorphin LD4. The ride was smooth and it was surprisingly soft as well. I could comfortably do up to a 10k in these with the amount of cushioning underfoot. After just two of these 100 meter tests though, I decided to check on the spike wells. I didn't have much confidence in the strength of these spike wells, so I expected to see at least one of them get totally dislodged. After that I took the shoes onto the curves and there were no problems there but the real test of lateral stability will come if I use these on an indoor track with the much tighter turns. Here though was the most notable issue. The heel is stretchy. The upper was printed in rubbery TPU and as I show here my foot can shift backwards in the shoe because of the stretch. This is a serious problem when I push into the track with a lot of force like when I'm accelerating or running near or at top speed. I was worried that this wasn't just an issue with the stretchiness of the upper, like perhaps the insole was slipping or the upper was just shaped wrong, so I crudely taped on some leftover nylon parts from previous upper designs and then I went out for more testing. Fortunately it was just a problem with the material and nothing else. This was quite an effective fix for the heel slippage because I was able to accelerate and run near top speed with no heel slippage whatsoever. And to reinforce the fact that I need better spike wells, another one of these nuts got dislodged during the tests. With the testing complete, I'd like to go over the laundry list of changes I plan on making. This means I am making a version 2 or a mark 2, which is the naming convention I think I'll be using. First is the upper. To fix the heel stretching issue, I'll just print the back half of the upper in nylon. Now I did design the entire upper entirely in nylon previously, but I did switch to the more stretchy TPU to avoid creasing over the toe area. But I can use both materials where needed to get the best of both worlds. I'll probably save a little weight right away by printing some of the upper in nylon because Compared to the TPU, I only print nylon in two layers rather than three because nylon's rigid enough where it only needs two layers. I can also make the biggest cut in weight by decreasing the stack height of the midsole foam. I already mentioned that this shoe is plenty well cushioned, but I don't see myself racing up to a 10K in these shoes. So I'll take off around two millimeters in the heel and the forefoot from the current 14 in the heel and 
10 in the forefoot. I might also taper the forefoot cushioning, which is the same thickness from the metatarsal heads to the tip of the toes. Most shoes, including even very thin spikes, do taper at least just a little bit in that area. So I might add just a little bit of a taper there. Also pertaining to the weight and cushioning is the insole. I currently have a three millimeter insole, which is already a lot thinner than the insoles in most running shoes, but I still think it's too thick and too cushioned for my purposes here. So by thinning it out, I'll save a little bit of weight and I'll put myself a little closer to the track for a more responsive ride. I already mentioned how two of the spike wells fell out, so I at least need to change how they're embedded into the plate. They will need a lot more support than just the plastic I crudely pushed over the top with a soldering iron. The real issue though is that these tiny nuts have such little leverage within the plate. Typical spike receptacles have a large base, which gives them a lot of leverage as a large lever force is exerted onto the spike. I could also alleviate this lever force by only using eighth inch spikes instead of the quarter inch spikes I used for testing. I'd like to use the common spike receptacles, but I have no way of getting my hands on any of them just by themselves, unfortunately. Last and maybe least, I'll redesign the heel traction piece so that it better covers the outside edge of the heel, covering up some of the exposed foam that's probably going to get torn up by the track. And with that, I've gone over the important changes I'd like to make when I make an improvement on this spike. The largest issue is definitely the weak spike wells, but once I beef those up, I think I'll be confident enough to take these the full distance of a race or a time trial. If you want to see how these spikes improve in the future, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Until then, thanks for watching, and stop wearing elf shoes. Your feet will thank you.